Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Mr. Hayes' World of Math. We're talking about statistics and specifically confidence intervals, and we're going to talk about difference of means today. Copy of all the notes are down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But let's jump in because we talked about Oreos in the first video. Here in the third one, we are talking about chocolate chip cookies. So, um, normally what would end up happening is I would bring in both Chips Ahoy and um, the great value chippers from Walmart, and I'd have the kids go through, and you would go through and get a, one cookie of each and determine how many chocolate chip, how many chocolate chips are in each cookie. And so you're going to record those down here. So last year, this is what I got. Um, I had 23 chips in the Chips Ahoy cookie and 17 in the great value chippers. We don't spend a lot of time talking about how best, you know, best way to do it. And so obviously it's not like a super real thing, but again, what we're trying to do is use this as a structure. And so what we end up doing here then is those get all recorded on the board. And so we end up making a chart that looks much like this one. If I can get the right screen up. And so you can see it right here. It looks relatively normal. A lot of them are kind of in this area right here from between about 4.5 and 4.8. And so that's going to be good to know. So I come back here and my mean is... Um, so right here, I've got 21.93, 17.29, and then, so that's the for the Chips Ahoy, the mean for the value chippers, and then I get 4.64 as a difference there. So w then what we're going to go through do, oh, and then we also pull out, I'm sorry, the standard deviations for each. <clears throat> so from there, what we're going to end up doing here is that, um, so we made a dot plot, et cetera, et cetera, sampling distribution of the difference of the two means. And we're going to describe the shape, the center, and the spread. Why? Because it's a good review. It's what we do. And I forgot to turn on that screen. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, so here are the numbers that I have there. So again, means, standard deviations for each. And then down here, so the shape was approximately normal. My center is going to be normally the difference of, typically what we've done has always been the um, difference of the two population means. And then over here, so what we're going to do is we're going to use that estimate of the difference between the two as the difference between the two means. And then over here, what we'll have is that here is the typical standard deviation one. So our standard error, much like what we've done before, is going to be set up like that. So now the next question is, do we have conditions for constructing the confidence intervals? Well, let's take a look. Is it random? Yep, we can assume that's independent random samples, that you picked a random cookie plus the cookies that are in the packages are randomly gotten. Over here, now notice 24 is going to be less than or equal to one-tenth of all Chips Ahoy cookies, and 24 is less than one-tenth uh, one of all Chippers cookies. And then for normality, ideally we should have bigger than 30. However, since the graph looks normal, we can go ahead and say then the sample distribution is also going to be normal. Okay, so we'll be able to be okay with that. Now, here comes the interesting part. In terms of creating the confidence interval, we're going to have to play around with degrees of freedom a little bit, and I'll talk to that, talk to that point here in a second. Okay, so again, point estimate plus margin of error. There's my general formula, x, uh, x bar 1, x2 bar, x x sub 1 bar minus x sub 2 bar, plus or minus my t-score, plus or minus your standard error. Now the question now becomes, because obviously we have all of this information here, and you can see it here, what do we do here? Okay. Well, what ends up happening here is there's a couple, there's two different ways. There is a way that you can actually go through and calculate out degrees of freedom between two different populations. Okay. It is, and there's some ways you can actually even do it on your calculator. It's rather intensive, and they used to actually have something like, you have to teach this, okay? So in this case here, you're going to take the lowest number and subtract one and do that degrees of freedom, okay? Because this is going to be our most conservative view. So that's going to be your most conservative option. And so when I do that, I look down for degrees of freedom of 27. I wanted to construct a 97% confidence interval. I got 2.069. So that's what I use there. Okay. Safe, easy, conservative. We know it's going to work. All right. Another video, I may go through and show you how to calculate this out in the, um, the calculator. But just so you know, for comparison, okay, the calculator version would give you a 
I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's from my other notes. It would actually give you something along the lines of about 2.59, 2.60, and then down to about like 6.7, around somewhere between 7 and 9. And why? Because your degrees of freedom would be calculated out to be probably somewhere in about the 38 range. So again, it's not super significant if you were doing this like all in, then maybe you would want to do that. But for right now, playing, remember, we've always said playing more conservatively is always going to be helpful. Okay. Because then that way you can't be questioned. Um, you can say, I, this is the most conservative thing that I have here and go from there. Now, do we have evidence to say that there's a difference in range of cookies um, between Chips Ahoy and Great Value Chipper cookies? Yeah, because all the plausible values here are positive, right? So that means that zero isn't an option. And it's just like what we did back with proportions. Um, so zero isn't contained in that. So then, therefore, we have convincing evidence of a difference in the number, in the average number of chocolate chip cookies, or number of chocolate chips in the cookies, I'm sorry. Now, something else to remember here that we did before. Um, so like here, if I've got plus and plus or minus and minus in here in my confidence interval, that means that you're not having a little bit of both. So that's going to be convincing evidence. And if I have one where it's negative, let's make sure I get that in the shot, negative or positive, that is going to be convincing evidence. It's not going to be convincing evidence because zero is going to be there. And plus, one side might be bigger in some cases and some one might not be the other. So with that being said, we are going to go ahead and jump over to part two to formalize this. So we'll see you over there. Talk to you soon.